Hi everyone. So I just recorded the first episode and I watched it and I just wanted to insert this video in front of it to tell you um, it's terrible and really set your expectations as low as possibly um, as possible. Okay, um, I'm nervous. Uh, I'm not good at this yet. So um, I have a lot of learning to go through to be uh, good on camera. If you see my body shaking a little bit, it's because my knee is shaking because um, I, I have ADHD and I took my, you know, my, my ADHD meds were basically at their height when recording that episode. <clears throat> They're still going on pretty pretty heavily. So, um, I, you know, when you, so ADHD meds, I, a lot of people take Adderall, I take Vivens, but um, um, if, you, if you do have ADHD, by the way, I highly recommend to try Vivens if it works for you. It's, it's a much smoother version of Adderall, but it still has a sort of a peak and in that little peak, you can be a little uh, fidgety, but not as much as an Adderall. Anyway, so a fair warning there. And uh, also, I forgot to mention episode, I have also PTSD in terms of sort of what quote unquote qualifies me to talk about some uh, uh, about this and um, why I feel I can maybe perhaps relate to people more now than um, because I didn't feel necessarily the same way. Uh, many years ago before I was diagnosed, before I, uh, I had the symptoms and so forth. Um, and I also want to show you how I'm recording this because it's so um, ghetto and <laughs> so um, I'm, I'm really crying. I'm not laughing. Obviously, I'm crying on the inside. But I if, one day I want to uh, laugh. I want to look back at this episode and actually laugh at this. Um, so my phone was on this speaker. Um, that way it's closer to the level of my face. Um, and, um, you know, the audio goes to my laptop, and I'll sync it later. And then the last thing is this cool mug at my friend's office. Death before decap, bitches. All right. Uh, oh, yeah, the rest of the office doesn't matter. It's just, uh, it's got a room here, but he's letting me use. And then it's his office there. Uh, this is their, you know, animation studio. They have a couple more rooms, but um, cool place. Uh, loose keys. Hire them if you need, if you have animation needs. Um, Tell your friends, everyone. Okay, I'll see you in the next episode. So, um, this is the first, the very first video and audio from my uh, content series called Life with Pont or Life, comma, Pont or just Life. If I go, you know, mainstream and uh, have millions of viewers, I'll probably just call it Life. L-I-F-E, and I'll make up some kind of thing it stands for as an acronym, even though really it's just the word life, but it's more fun that way. Um, I, as you know, oh yeah, my name, hi, 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 my name is Alex, uh, Pont, known as Pont, uh, last name Novosad, doesn't matter. And I wanted to record these, uh, a lot of you know me uh, from esports and gaming, so I'm sure a lot of my initial viewers are... Uh, people that I somehow managed not to piss off in the gaming slash esports space or people who are still uh, haven't unfollowed me because of all the political stuff I've been tweeting uh, this year. Uh, but what happened this year is uh, a lot for me, but essentially I, I went into pretty deep depression uh, and it's not the first time in my life that it happened, but uh, I think this is by far the worst. Um, I had to deal with Suicidal thoughts. I had to deal with, uh, obviously, you know, not wanting to work and not, not being productive. I had to deal with uh, things on a on a professional side, uh, things on a personal side. I moved to a new city. I lost my friends. Uh, well, I lost literally lost some friends, but I also you know moved out of my friend sort of circle uh, support system in the Bay Area there in the West Coast. Um, my family situation is trash. Uh, you know, I don't talk to my dad. Um, and now also my mom because she keeps trying to have me talk to my dad and uh, she kind of started siding with him anyway my, I, th th that's a that's for a different part uh, a different part of this uh, content series to sort of give you the background of my family later and and but that's another reason why I wanted to make them because I think in general what I'm saying is I'm pretty messed up <laughs> and um, at the same time I'm pretty self-aware and I've spent years and years um, previously studying human psychology uh, with the intent of trying to get out of certain cycles myself, right? Um, get rid of my daddy issues, um, which, which by the way, if, if you um, if you if you don't think you have parent issues, uh, first either congratulations or you're really arrogant. Um, <laughs> either way, I guess good for you. But 
if for those of you who have come to realize that life isn't so uh, simple and things can get complex, especially as you age, um, you know, and hormones kind of stop acting in the way that you do when you're young, and so you you stop having that sort of natural energy uh, volcano that comes from being young. Um, you start hitting, and and you you know you kind of like get disillusioned by a lot of things in life. You have more problems. You have all, most of all more responsibilities. I think that's the thing that that's the the weight that really crunches a lot of people down. You know, the bills, the debt, um, the sort of uh, we we tend to make promises we cannot keep, uh, myself including. So, um, and and as a nation, I mean, in America, and, as, and I think in the world in general, you know, it's it's hard. It's really hard to live within your means because we are bombarded with. Um, I mean, the, the, the science of marketing and making us want other things is so advanced that really it's, it's hard for a, a person, you know, just learning life, you know, getting into their teens and then, and then their first years of adulthood, et cetera, to kind of like be, know how to defend themselves from that bombardment of, um, of marketing and so forth. And, you know, and we idolize it as, you know, as a system or whatever. And I'm not going to go into that. I'm not, this is not political podcast and um, I'm not in any way against capitalism, but I'm just saying it's hard to live within your means when, when there's so much working sort of against that. Um, and, um, you know, maybe not necessarily against that because nobody tells us to live outside of our means, but we, we tend to go out of our means because we do not know how to self leverage Anyway, so that adds to your weight. It adds to your stresses. Um but everything is just, you know, by the time, and, you know, I'm just, I, I'm, at least I don't have kids. I mean, that, that could be another stressor. Of course, it can also be a huge source of happiness, but um, it doesn't matter where you are in life. It, it, and that's also another reason I'm doing this podcast. I realized that kind of people dealing with stuff is uh, everywhere. Like it's people of all situations, all upbringings. It doesn't matter if you come from a poor family, wealthy family, even though it is more likely in the, from a poor family, you would be dealing with this. Um, etc. Like it's just everyone deals with stuff, um, and we're all broken. <laughs> For those, uh, there are maybe if he was or not, maybe like um, I'd say Dwayne Johnson, The Rock doesn't seem to be very broken to me, and so forth. So there are some people that either have dealt with their issues or have been sort of fortunate enough to navigate their challenges in life uh, in a way that cap their optimism up, you know, or maybe they sort of, uh, uh, but, but even, uh, listen, I'll tell you, even those people, like if you listen to the rocks story, he's had some pretty, uh, hard times in life. You know, if you read say Elon Musk's story, uh, they've lived, you know, their family lived in crappy apartments. Uh, they, at times he and him brother had to, and, um, someone else in the house had to, does he have a sister? And I, I obviously don't know enough about Elon, but you know, I'm a big fanboy. But uh, they, you know, they had to like rotate who sleeps on a bed, who sleeps on a couch, who sleeps on the floor. So it's people. Everybody goes through stuff. Um, and and but I will say that some of us do the better than others. Some of us get uh, sort of a, a worse roll of the dice. And I've. And, and I've been both. So, you know, and, and that's kind of what pushed me to making these, I think, because now I'm in a place or there's a habit in a place this past year and I still am to a large degree, and I'm, but I, I, it's getting a little better um, where I sympathize heavily with people that are just really stuck in loops, um, who have severe depression, who have, um, who just don't know what to do, right? And it doesn't matter how they got there. Uh, it, it matters in the sense of trying to uh, unravel it but it doesn't matter in the sense of judgment because everyone either gets there at some point or is sort of, uh, so to speak, at risk of getting there, right? Um, nobody's immune to this. And if you think you're immune, you're just, uh, you're just an arrogant ass. So, and, and one day life will stop you across the face and teach you otherwise. Uh, you know, I, I had, dif I, I never judged people who were sort of down or, um, just unmotivated, etc., or I had trouble getting motivated, but stop and loops. I, I always had sympathy in some ways, but I couldn't truly relate. Uh, for the most part of my life, I've, I, you know, I've had my challenges. We all do. Not a single human being grows up without going through challenges. But the way I dealt with those challenges is where you know the difference is, and that's really what all that matters in life. If you really think about it, is how do we respond and what sort of mood we're in as we're tackling these challenges. And for the most of my life, I've been in a pretty, you know, let's take it, yeah, I can do anything. 
um, nothing is impossible mood and and then things started changing slowly and and then I had a few key moments in life that I remember vividly where things have really took a drastic turn and then I came back a bit to being like the warrior again and you know and then this year just man this year uh, if I if you could just be walking on the street or like running running if you could be running really on the street as fast as you can and then all of a sudden from behind a corner like a two by four swings out you know a piece of wood and hits you in the face and you just slam dunk or not slam, I don't know what you just slam on the on the floor on the, on the ground you just fall violently violent speed momentum you know I'm, I'm wearing this if, you, if you're not watching the video if you're just looking to listen to the sound which I think this <clears throat> episode will only be on the video but maybe you have your YouTube in the background because you're you know really cool and you have YouTube premium or something um, I do too it's okay and so you, you you cannot see but you should see that I'm wearing a doctor hoodie Fuck. excuse me <laughs> I'm wearing doctor disrespect hoodie and I have to remember to look into the iPhone's tiny little camera on the right side here um, so violence speed and momentum is how I is how you would fall right if um, if a two by four hits you while you're running on the street and that's how I felt at the beginning of, of this year or definitely by the middle of this year and um, I, I can share some details of why I cannot share some others uh, in terms of you know really there's some privacy situation there but um, I, I, I want to be very open to this po podcast and that's another part of idea you know I having people come out because what we tend to do this this by the way this is all just the intro yet because I have no idea what I'm doing and I hope to get better at this stuff and so this is all just intro introducing the podcast this whole episode is an intro you know it was it been 10 minutes now or whatever um, but anyway the idea is like we we tend to cover in a shell right as um, we get into these states into these loops uh, whether it's depression whether it's um, laziness uh, through because we are like unsure you know we're lack of confidence whatever it is whatever our loop is in our heads we get into it and we tend to burn our shells and and then it, that's when it gets really bad you know when when you 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 want to do something you don't do it and then you blame yourself on not doing it and it makes you feel even worse and so because you're feeling bad you're not doing the next thing or in the next moment you choose not to do something and then you feel bad about that and you've and you, then you don't talk to your friends about it. You stay in the shell. You don't talk to others about it. You don't come out. You're ashamed of your state, right? Because there's definite feeling of freaking shame. And I was ashamed of being depressed, especially if you have responsibilities in terms of other people. You know, I ran a, and maybe still will, stay tuned, um, an esports company. And so I felt I had responsibility to, you know, it doesn't matter if you work with a few people or many, to sort of never show face and always be the warrior, right? And that became in and of itself another burden. Um, and it's, it's not healthy. So that's one reason why I decided to do this. I'm like, I'm super uncomfortable sitting here right now. I, I have no clue what I'm doing. I'm, I have no plans for these episodes. But I, and you know, I'm, I'm just in my friend's office here, uh, Brad, if you know him, Reg Miluski, he runs an animation studio called Loose Keys really freaking good um they you know they did stuff for diplo and many companies and they're really fantastic so if you need animators hire them but i just you know asked if i could just sit in his conference room because it has better lighting and just do something and so i just turned on the camera turned on this freaking microphone and i'm saying nonsense so what this is about if you're still <laughs> wondering um as am i this is about life this is about getting out of the loop how can we get out of the loop and I think for a lot of us um, there are a lot of paradoxes that we will talk and discuss because for example the paradox of getting out of the loop is that you simply snap out of it um, the paradox one of the paradoxes is that it's actually very simple the answers are so simple life isn't rocket science but at the same time for a lot of us, it helps to understand what's going on in our heads, why it's going on, and sort of process it, analyze it, and then that will help us arrive to the simple answer like, wow, I can't, why did I even care about this? You know, I, I could just choose to not care. You know, choosing the simple answer is something any one of us can do any moment. 
that is absolutely accurate and and it's sort of like um it just it's not easy <laughs> it just isn't easy and it's um that's why it often takes for us to see something super inspirational for example or get kicked in the butt so hard that we just like screw this i'm choosing from all and just get up and go work out or get up and go to work on time or get up and do this project i'm passionate about um, or it takes for us, for some of us, it takes to actually understand the psychological, the philosophical, most of the psychological nuances behind, you know, what's going on in our minds and our brains. And I want to touch on those as well. Um, at other times, it takes for us to hear a story that someone else is going through that is similar to ours, which is why I'll try to invite people, whoever, whichever weird, crazy people want to come and actually be on this thing. What do I call this? this is this a podcast? Is this content series? I don't know. But uh, I'll, I'll try to have people share their stories. And when I bring people on this, I'm not going to go easy on them, right? Like, I don't want, I'm not interested in people who will just sort of give us the rundown of what happened in their life. Like, oh, okay, I was struggling and then I started this company and I'm doing better or whatever. Or I found this person or I went to a therapist. No, I want to hear the nitty gritty, amazingly hard to talk about details of what was really going through their mind, were they suicidal or not, were they, you know, thinking about hurting maybe even others. Where they are uh, thinking of themselves as complete losers or failures, and at what points of life were they crying at night every time they went to sleep? Where they, you know, where they basically playing two different roles, being two different people, one in front of others, one in front of themselves in a mirror. You know, how much, what kind of conversation they have with themselves when they looked in the mirror or thought about themselves? You know, was it a positive one? Was it a super negative one? Were they overeating? Were they, um, Whatever, I want to hear, you know, where they're using drugs, maybe even where they becoming an addict. Uh, and they know, maybe nobody knows, maybe people do know that they have to go to rehab. I want to know the worst parts and, and, how, and I'm, when I talk to them, I'm going to try to trace it to what exactly happened in their life, what led to it. And I want them to name names, you know, maybe keep some of the privacy details because um, I think we all, we're all entitled to tell our own stories, but we should be also... Um, careful you know that other people have the right to privacy as well and you know it's up to each of us i guess to balance but uh, that's my stance is i'll try to talk about my side of things without revealing um sort of some of the things that i think uh, another person would really care not for the world not to know if there are other people involved so anyway so anyway i wanted to tell their story I, I want to really dig down and i want to invite those kind of people ideally people that have some success now or happiness and success to me is just that happiness i don't care about your money if that's what makes you happy, great. Come on a show. We'll call it a show now. Um, so, you know, come talk to it. But do not, um, you know, people who cannot read, and I'll, I'll pre-screen them before. Point is, stay tuned. The guests are going to be awesome. Might be zero guests because none of them may agree to this, uh, <laughs> to, to, for me to really, you know, expose them like that. And that's okay. You know, not, uh, not people have the right to privacy, like I said, and... And, um, I, but I hope to find some people that really want to talk about this. And uh, I would like to also talk about some people who haven't made it yet, who are struggling right now. You know, maybe being on a show will help them. Maybe um, they just they have something to share, some insight that they've learned, and um, it's just relatability. So if you know people like that who are, well, in Chicago right now, because I can't afford to travel to see them very far. I mean, I have a car, so I can drive a little bit. Yeah, you know, I'll just bring my iPhone. I'm recording an iPhone, by the way. It's it's really it's super ghetto setup. Like, it's it's an iPhone, and then this microphone is connected to a laptop, and then I'll sync the sound and video, and uh, yeah, that's uh, that's about it. If you know those people, let me know. Uh, if you have questions, I want you to ask. You know, what do you want to know? Um, what loop you're stuck in? Would you like some advice on that? And you know, advice is, first of all, advice is very hard, right? Uh, but uh, when I say advice, I mean, like, trying to maybe, um, I'll, I might ask, if you ask me a question about your, or tell me about your loop, I might ask you back some questions. Um, or if it's something that I've dealt with and have gone through myself, um, or if it so happens that one of my guests or people I know, you know, in the future have gone through it and I'm then was like, oh, yeah, there was that other person having that question, so I can connect these two and have my guests answer that question. You know, that's, uh, that's what we'll do. Um, we'll try to talk about it. But if I do have advice, I'll say it. Um, that's, and that's, uh, like, I really want, you know, I've been 
wondering for a long time, what can I do to bring some value to this world? And I have some plan. I want to get uh, involved politically in the, um, probably not this election, but the next one uh, on an organizational side. But I, you know, I, I, you know, I do my, you know, I donate money um, to charities uh, on the regular. There's a couple, um, like I sponsor a couple of kids that I write letters to and stuff um, in poor communities. But that's, I, I, like, how can I give back on something that, on a regular basis, uh, that's something that's scalable. And I've realized that despite the fact that I am, look, still 18, obviously, or maybe 21, actually, 21, because I, I like to get into bars. Um, I've had a full life in some ways. Um, obviously not as full as uh, some others. And I've been blessed in many ways. You know, I, I was never bombed by airstrikes, for example. And, but, you know, I, I grew up in uh, a poor country in general in, uh, you know, my family went through a couple of bankruptcies while living in said country, which is Ukraine. And then I moved to another country, which is the United States. So I experienced, you know, dropping everything, coming to a new country, learning new culture. And I've traveled quite a bit. I've lived in several cities around the States, uh, just about every major city now, um, actually. Depends how you define major, really, you know. So I, I still haven't been to Dallas or Houston. Uh, I've been to Austin. I haven't been to what's the one. There's not that many cities left, to be honest. So been around. I've been in Canada a little bit too. Um, you know, I've been a bit to Europe, um, and I, I read not a lot, but sometimes I, I you know I follow. So anyway, so I, you know, I, tried, I did my own business for five years, and then I also went to work for many, many years. You know, I went through relationships. That I, I've had, um, you know, and then I have parents who, you know, that relationship is very problematic. I was good and then became problematic. And, you know, I have a brother who went through the same thing with, with our parents. But then in my relationship, my brother goes on and off. Um, like I, so on the family side, on the business side, on the personal side, like cultural side, uh, world citizen or world whatever platform side, it's just a lot. You know, a lot of people just grow up in one place and then they travel a little bit or move to another city for college and that's it. And, you know, and that's great. Um, and I think they have a lot to say as well because, but the way I thought about it is like, well, I've been to many places and went through a lot of shit. So just be straight with you. Um, and so maybe maybe there's something I could share. You know, I took programs in uh, related to psychology and brain science. I took um, I spent. I wasn't a really main, main teacher. I was kind of an assistant teacher in um, a max security prison for a year and a half to um, uh, to to help those guys find peace. Um, and was shocked like to find that a lot of the guys there, at least the ones in our program were actually surprisingly good people uh, who have just happened to make a mistake in their life at some point. A lot of it was pretty minor, like, you know, being in the wrong place at the wrong time. Um, but some of it was, you know, actual major stuff. And, but by the time they got to that and by the time we saw them, they were actually, um, they were like, I don't know how to say it. I mean, I mean yes, they, they committed crime um, or been around crime, uh, but they, uh, they've, they certainly changed, and they were to in that moment of time they were good people, and I believe some of them have already come out of prison, and uh, as far as I've hear about them are being good people, and it's anyway so that was another thing that a lot of people don't experience. You know, not a lot of people go to visit prisons, much less um, volunteer in them, much less for for that amount of time, and in, uh, and and you know, and again in max security. I don't know. So just, I mean, I'm still a young, what the hell do I know? Like there's so much, I don't know. It's incredible. Uh, but if I think that way and I say that I have nothing to contribute simply because I haven't experienced literally everything in life, um, A, that's in, an unrealistic expectation. Uh, yeah, can never experience everything. And yeah, I, I just got a point where I want to share uh, something and I hope it, because dudes, I, th this is so cheesy, but if it helps one person out there, I'm a very sentimental guy, like <clears throat> easy to cry. I cry in movies all the time. I almost just cried now, choking. I'm gonna just choke now thinking about helping one person out there, um, maybe save, save their life if they listen. And uh, 
and, and the reason is because, you know, um, I, I, earlier this year I could have been that person who um, ended their life. And um, I don't remember why, um, I think I think I sort of pulled myself out of that, but I had some support system and I'm, I'm sure it helped. I just can't, there was not like a defining moment where somebody said something and I was like, wow, okay, I want to live. But um, it helped to have some support system and I know that um, those moments exist and maybe maybe the show is not going to be that moment either. Maybe it will be just some support system uh, or maybe that somebody will have the moment watching. Uh, but for all of us, uh, the rest of us, or the rest of people, it's just really getting out of the cycle, okay? And helping get out of the cycle, whatever you're in. So this is the end of the introduction to uh, life with pont or life comma pont or just life show. Thank you for coming. Um, please send me your questions. Tell me your stories. You can DM me. Uh, I have open DMs on Twitter. Uh, please don't misuse that. Just, just, just send, just send your question. But um, I, I'll reply as much as I can. Um, I don't intend to like start long conversations on Twitter, uh, just because, um, you know. I mean, at first I might, but if there's a lot of them, you know. Um, but w I'll, I'll do what I can. Right? Just, um, yeah. Just send me your questions. And let's just go from there. And I, um, I'm supposed to fuck. I, I, I think I need to do some kind of inspirational quote in the end, uh, or something. And to say, let's see. Um, well, I'll tell you what, what uh, sort of what kind of thinking helped me stick around. And um, you know, in essence, I figured that I can always go like. We, what I kept thinking is like, I can always die, okay? I can, there is really no reason, um, like, I, I don't I don't have religious beliefs, um, so I, I, I am in a place where I just don't know what's next, right? There could be complete darkness and nothingness. There could be heaven, there could be hell, there could be whatever. I, I mean, of course, it's kind of, heaven and hell, I think, are ridiculous um, concepts, but Plus, all the fun people are going to hell. It seems like so, it doesn't seem like that bad of a place. Uh, but I, I think. But if you believe in heaven and hell, I respect that too. And um, it, the point is, I, I don't believe in really anything afterlife. If anything, I, I'm, I'm mostly um, going towards the side of that we're in a simulation, and so when we die, we just go to the next simulation. I've had experiences of life where um, I, uh, like, I've met somebody that I could have sworn I met many times in previous lives. Um, I had flashbacks, I sort of deja vus as well, which are kind of really weird to explain. I met other people who have a lot of deja vus. And, and then like, for example, my with my ex, when we met, um, she had a ton of deja vus while we were dating. Like she went from almost very rare deja vus right before we met to having uh, weekly, sometimes daily deja vus after we met for like six months. And then it started to like disappear one after another a little bit, and um, and I don't, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll go into that later. But the point is, there there are things that happen in life that make me question what is really going on. Um, but at the end of the day, I don't know. And but what I think is, I can always find out. Like every scenario I take takes me to the point where I'm gonna find out what happens after. Okay, so why the hurry? And Right now, I have a chance to figure out what, and, and if I have any chance ever to figure out, because I'm a curious person, I want to figure out what the hell this life is really about. Like, why are we here? And it could be nothing. It could be pointless. And in fact, you know, I'm, I'm a pretty big fan of existentialism and generally saying that there is no uh, value to life except the one that we ascribe to it. But, but it, it's like um, I, I have a chance, you, you know, it's, it's like a math problem or any problem that, like, I would leave unsolved, and that really bugs me, <laughs> you know? Uh, and life is designed as a yin and yang experience. No matter what you do, no matter how well you, th you try to live your life and how many problems you try to avoid and how well you think you're doing today, for example, if you are doing well today, th your life 
will be at all times yin and yang. So if you're in a top, you're gonna go down. If you're in a down, you're gonna probably go up. I don't know how high, but you'll go up. So <clears throat> it's it's rare. I mean, of course, you can get addicted, for example, and and it's unfortunate. Um, it happens to a lot, and you can you know can sort of die. But the death thing is is to me is not the lowest point. Death simply happens. Okay, and you can die while you're at the lowest point. You can die while you're at the high, highest point. You can die somewhere in the middle, but you will always die, and we all will always die, and that's that's just part of life, and that's fine. And so death to me itself is I don't think it's the lowest point. So when when I see, for example, people who get addicted to to a drug and then maybe die on the street, it's 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 a very unfortunate thing. And but it, I don't see them as being at their lowest, like death being their lowest experience. I just see that they happen to have died uh, or passed away while experiencing a low in their life. You understand? And so if they had, you know, I don't want to say if they had hung on because it's easier said than done, especially in that situation. But if they had gotten help, for example, um, if they had the support system, et cetera, they would have uh, experienced a, a backup. And it, it just goes for all of us. You know, you, you break up with someone or they break up with you. You feel like the world is ending and then things get better. You lose your job, maybe um, you lose your loved one. I mean, somebody in your family dies. There are moments in time where your business crashes, your um, whatever, you break your legs, you get paralyzed on, on a part of your body. That moment can be awful. And I, I admit it, I cannot relate to some of them. But the, the thing is, it always gets better um, or you get used to it. And then if you just keep on living, you get up. And no matter what loss you experience today, so I don't know, I, I just, this, all of this I just said kind of like too windy to say that it's a yin and yang experience. It, there, there's one truth in life. The one guarantee you have is that it will be a yin and yang experience. It will be dark and it will be light. And the interesting thing that I thought as I was, as I'm still now minute eight into explaining <laughs> my thought process, which should have taken me one minute, is that life is, you know, we all want just light to be. We all want our lives to be basically just light. But the thing is, life is, by definition, dark and light. But you cannot have darkness without light. You cannot have light without darkness. Uh, good without evil, evil without good. It's like all good and evil are meaningless without each other. And so when I really thought about it, I thought, well, what I'm experiencing now is my balance, right? This is what I need to experience for my life to have balance. And I will experience more bad things in my life. But I will also then experience things to balance this thing out that I'm going through right now. And if I just keep on going and just not focus on what's going on right now in this very moment, but realize that this is literally part of my journey. This is part of the experience. This is the prescription. That's the formula. And um, will I ever figure out why that's the formula? You know, maybe not. It's kind of, you know, I don't know. Do you think ants figure out why they're ants? Um, any of us, I, maybe we'll never know. Maybe this is all simulation. Maybe this, maybe there really is God. And he's really, you know, weird because the things that have happened in this world are really strange. If he really is all powerful, there's too much suffering. But, you know, maybe there is some sort of, who knows? Who cares? Um, my, my point is um, I... I realized that's part of life and I don't want to miss out, you know, because I can always, 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 and whether I like it or not, I will at some point see the other side. So I was like, fuck, let me just get through it. Let me, um, let me see what's, what's happening. You know, w what's next. And, um, yeah, I, I think having that sort of, I mean, I don't know if it sounds screwed up, but I was already at the point of, you know, possibly committing some, um, committing suicide. I mean, I don't know why I'm dancing around it. But uh, so when you're at that point, I think having, thinking that, oh, well, that's an option I always have in the back of my pocket. I can always commit suicide. That thought made it easier. <laughs> that thought, we realized, well, okay, so it doesn't have to be today. Could be tomorrow. Could be a week. Could be never. But you know, that, that's fine. It, I have that. And it gave me peace. 
Because um, then I'm like, okay, if I have that, then then that's cool. But if I do that, I lose, I, I lose the rest. Like I, I don't know if I'll, I have another chance at this trip, right? Will I sort of even exist after this? Like, is 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 all we are just some chemical signals going through it? As long as they're going through, it's like a computer, right? As long as it's running, it's running. And then when you plug pull the plug, like pfft, there's no computer, there's no there's no operating system, there's nothing. It just doesn't exist. You just where does it go? Nowhere. I mean, where do computers go when you turn them off? Like, just I don't know it's just they don't work so maybe we give this soul thing too much credit maybe we're just simply you know w once the electrical impulse starts it just keeps going until it's off and maybe that's it uh, and if that's the case then you know I'll just wait till it's off on its own merit hopefully but I always have that pocket option and that gives me peace but also wants me to just keep going um, I don't know if it helps you and I don't even know if you're in that place uh, ignore if you're not so uh, I'm good I'm glad you're not but if you're still in other loops if you're facing depression if you have trouble motivating yourself blah blah that's what most of this podcast is about okay podcast did I say podcast I meant show because I, I don't I'm you know content series it's it's my face on an iPhone uh, mostly I'm mostly doing this to chronicle my beard growth so I've decided to grow out a bit and I'm hoping that I'll be able to take stills later and I'll sync them all in the same space, kind of, and I'll and I'll see my beard growing, because I'm too unorganized to actually take pictures every day, <laughs> and and have that sort of collection. So that is the real purpose of this. Um, I don't want to say I love y'all because that's really uh, inauthentic. I don't know y'all, uh, but I do. I, I do. Um, I want you to know you are loved, and you deserve love. And that is absolutely authentic. And um, and uh, you deserve respect. You deserve happiness. Um, I don't care how you think you're screwed up or how much guilt you're feeling or what you think is wrong with you. These are the truth. And we'll go over in detail in other episodes why that's true. And um, that's and that's very important. Uh, by the way, I have a, hold on. I have two books. I brought two books. One second. I'm going to uh, get them. Um, I highly recommend one of them, and then the other one you can get after that as well. Okay. Yeah, this is unedited. This is this is this is the real raw experience, guys, girls, and and everyone in between. This is uh this is unedited. Okay, so um, the first one is I um, don't know which way it's gonna show, but. It's called There Is Nothing Wrong With You, okay, uh, by, what's her name? Oh, yeah, Sherry Huber. Sherry, I don't know how to spell it. Sorry, her name, but uh, There's Nothing Wrong With You is a great book. Absolutely get it. It's a good start. She has many others. Um, they're repetitive in some ways in nature, uh, but I, I really enjoyed this one. It's, you can just keep it on your bed then and reread like every, every two weeks. It's short. It's one of the, the, the font is super big. This is for the kids in us. Like, seriously, look how big this, this font is. It's ridiculous. And um, it has illustrations of, I don't know, what is this, ice cream? Um, it has, uh, you know, some of them have exercises, some of these books. So anyway, one of her other books is called The Depression Book. So that's specifically the problem you're dealing with, the loop you're in. Um, get that, see if that helps. Um, uh, the way I find it is that when I read it, I feel elated, and then it kind of wears off. So, again, she has some books with some more specific exercises that I recommend, but uh, you can also just keep rereading them um, until, uh, you know, until it really sets in. And that has to do with um, uh, patterns in your brain, and that's, a di again, subject for another show. I was really going to end this at 20 minutes. I have no idea. <laughs> this is an intro episode. This is all, we'll just, this is all an intro. So you understand what this show is going to be about. Um, yeah, get the book. There's nothing wrong with you. You're wonderful. You're, you're, you're loved, and if you feel you're not, you deserve to be loved. Uh, that is a fucking fact. So sit on that and give me your loops, give me your problems. Uh, let's see if we can talk about some of that. Okay? Thank you for spending your time on. 
I'm really, I'm really, I'm, I'm gonna get better at this. I swear. I, 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 I think that's kind of. I want to train. I would love to be better at content. You know, because we live in this society of you being on camera and, and um, whether it's a camera you turn on yourself or the one go government has going. But either way, you're on camera. So I want to learn how to be good on it. You know, when I sit down today, I had no clue what I'm gonna say at all. I was scared because um, I had, I wanted to do something. Then I had ideas, and then I didn't write them down. And so when I got to this office today, I had no idea. And then I just started talking. Obviously, it's terrible. And it's tragic what came out. And um, it's, 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 but um, thank you for, I know I just wanted to say that. And um, hopefully I'll plan better for the next one, I guess. Bye.